Now, I'll show you. I'll do the same thing with the, the meat and potatoes of the posture part. So here is that is last year or it's, it's this year's and then this is last year's and you can just kind of line them up and see what we did with our cost. And this is just projected, so I mean it, it it can change if you need it to change. Um, so if you lined them up and you kind of looked at them, I've already outlined the. If you look, go over to gross total, it's the second column in on both sides. I've already outlined in the blue. That's where it summarizes those categories, which you guys don't have blue, but it's darker. And so I've already outlined the difference in the. Um, and the salary increases. Why that's different? I, we got that from Schedule B. I identified that. Um, I also have kind of already talked about the next line, which went from twenty-six thousand to forty-two thousand. The difference in um, those the health insurance benefits that went up. So likely that's to go up. And um, because the wages went up, then IBERS went up. Just I mean, in that same percentage. Same way with the next line that went from nine thousand to eleven thousand. Those were just all based on those that same that work, that first worksheet that I showed you how I got the costs and, and the formulas that I used. Um, the next thing, uh, the fifty eight hundred to the sixty four hundred. That are those are the fees that we pay ISAC. We pay them six bucks a person per month. Um, and um, I was kind of based on the, the new, we'll see what happens when the new regs come into effect, but we might see this expense go away because we might, well, we certainly couldn't, with the new regs, when our new billing system gets in place, pay them six bucks a person. So it'll, this might be an expense that goes away. Um, then the next line, $3,000, that was supplies. I kept that same, just, just because we don't really vary a whole lot. I know that the price of things go, are, is going to go up, but it's hard to gauge the price of paper and, and those types of ink cartridges and those types of things. That's what that mainly is. Um, and then uh, telephone and internet, that, again, I left it the same. It's really hard to gauge what price increase. And when I do the actual cost report for this year, you'll see what we actually paid last year versus. So uh, postage and shipping, e postage that has gone up, um, but I don't think enough that it warrants that changing at this time. Okay, then if you flip them over and do the same thing, um, transportation I took down. And um, not a whole lot, but we are we are transferring out all our cases that do not touch Sac, Calhoun, or Ida County. If they live in a county that doesn't touch one of those counties, we're transferring them out for a couple reasons. Um, uh, one re one reason is because of the way that um, the management plans and the new rules say that the county of residence is supposed to be authorizing services and, and so forth. It, it is better quality, uh, the people that are authorizing, the case managers, that we don't know a lot about resources in Saragora County. We don't know a lot about resources even in Polk County because if we just have one or two cases there, we don't know what's all available. And so it, it does make a lot of sense, better quality care for the person to have a local entity managing them. Um, what's the the exchange? How's that worked out with you? We have um, it's been pretty we've been trading is what we've been doing um, and that's worked out pretty <coughs> well and most of the trading we've done has been with DHS and they've been you know we've given them I think we gave them two and they gave us three 
for uh, at our first round. And and then there's been some times where people haven't had a trade for us. Um, most recently, um, Carroll County has had uh, some turnover, and we've recently are taking nine cases from them, which they're a county that touches our border, so we are already serving people there anyway. And they may be interested in even giving us more cases as time goes on. What's your case load? Uh, right now, it's about at 28. With these new cases, it'll put everybody at 39 from Carroll. Yeah. And you hope to stay 31 or less, or? Well, that's what I hope, but I don't know that we'll be able. That would be ideal, but I don't know that we can make the numbers work if we have less than that amount. So we can make the numbers work now, but I don't know when we get to the 15-minute business. We may have to go higher. We may have to go a lot higher. So. Okay. So, and if they're interested, <coughs> we can keep that line of communication open. So, so, so I did take the travel down a bit, but then at the same time, I figured I didn't know what the price of gas, I would, at least the gas that we'd be buying for the county is going to increase, and I don't know what you guys are going to do as time goes on with <coughs> mileage. So, I didn't, I only took it down $700, so. Training, I left the same. The, tr the trainings that we mainly attend are through ISAC. They are generally about the same price every year. The motels have been, so that's, that's a pretty accurate number. Um, the vehicle repair, I bumped that up because we're having some problems with the vehicle and there's just other things that, you know, we have to be aware of. Um, where you're seeing that, uh, agency vehicles at 1960 and then there's some other equipment that's all depreciation stuff and we got some new computers and the vehicle we're still depreciating we depreciate that for five years and we got it in 2005 so we'll be depreciating that for a few more years so um, so those costs are relatively with the exception of some repair the other big thing is that if you go down to almost the last gray line, you'll see $9,854 and last year and then this coming year you'll see $28,906. Those are the figures that we got from that cost auditing service, that CAS that comes in and audits our space and so forth. And last year they gave me an 8 point something percent rate. And this year, I, I, I typed it in, they moved our rate up to 18.38. What I think, and I need to call them, I just haven't had an opportunity to yet, what I think that is is that our new building is catching up with us. That they had us in the space downtown, and then it took a while, and there are a couple, however they do business, a couple of years. Supervisor's office for kept speaking. Yeah. Um, I'll let you talk to me. That's right. I don't want you to know what time he's done. Come on, look. Come on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh. Oh, well, maybe around 11. Yeah. Okay. That's it. And this also. <coughs> It was several years before that CAS recognized that we had two offices. So I don't know how this affects, I, do, I really need to, I don't understand their breakdowns as well as, and it just helps if that Randall, <coughs> if that Randall Handley or whatever, so to call him. But this money <coughs> is money that always goes back to the auditor's office. It's a check that we cut to the auditor's office. So, it, but it's now getting shared for sure between the two auditor's offices, but the Ida County one is just a small portion of this. So the money that goes to the auditor's office, that's increased almost $20,000. So $19,000. So that, that, that plays a big role in our rate too. So then it, this gives us the total formula and then it's, it's so it's, we're increasing from 169 0.5 is our projected to 